Zealand says they've done all they can to ensure they've given themselves the best possible chance of retaining the America's Cup. News Hub's Tom McRae has been at the pre-racing news conference. All the talking is done and there is a real sense of relief from both teams about that. Peter Burling and Max Elena face off for the final time before racing begins tomorrow. Both confirmed they had made significant changes to their boats since the last time they raced, including new foils, masts and sails. No, I don't have you know, any, I suppose, regrets in terms of the decisions we've made along the way. You know, it's been a, a pretty incredible campaign. Despite all the talk the Kiwis are faster, no one will actually know for sure until racing begins. I'll let you know tomorrow afternoon. Uh, to be honest, we don't know. I mean, there is a lot of guests. Uh, there is a lot of people know already the final result. I think sport is a final. There is a lot of pressure on top of both team, and um, I think we got nothing to lose. Wind conditions are set to be nor'westerlies around 50 knots and could be quite shifty, which will make for some exciting racing. Tom McRae, News Hub. The mighty... In now to sport, and Peter Burling says he's got no regrets ahead of tomorrow's America's Cup start. The Team New Zealand sailor will be at the helm when they begin their America's Cup defence against Italy's Luna Rossa in Auckland. Burling says he's confident Team New Zealand have done everything to give themselves the best chance of retaining the trophy. You know, it's been a, a pretty incredible campaign. You know, obviously there's uh, been a lot of, I suppose, changes going along. Um, especially with the, the COVID environment, you know, not being able to have the warm-up events that you know, Max touched on, you know, and a lot of different um, situations getting thrown at us. But you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, we're here now, and tomorrow's the the day where it, you know, it all gets exciting. Hokimai Ano, welcome back. Peter Burling is urging Kiwis to get behind Team New Zealand ahead of tomorrow's America's Cup racing because it might be the last time it's held in New Zealand. Tom McRae joins us now from the Viaduct. And Tom, what's the feeling down there? You are 24 hours out from the start of racing and the village here should be humming with anticipation, but, well, clearly that is not the case. Level 2 has put paid to that. And Team New Zealand's helmsman, Peter Burling, has urged New Zealanders to get behind the event because it could be the last time it is held in this country. And that's because Team New Zealand have floated the idea of, if they win it, of taking it overseas, basically selling the hosting rights to the highest bidder. So Burling wants to see New Zealanders getting behind the cup and enjoying it before it's too late. You know, representing New Zealand, but you know, also competing on home waters for New Zealand is you know, something that's pretty incredible uh, to be a part of and you know, something that I think really makes you proud to be a Kiwi, you know, seeing the beautiful waters out here we get to race in. Of course, there's the small matter of Team New Zealand actually uh, winning it back first. Um, from, from there, there's obviously been so much talk and the politics and the bluster off the water, but finally that is done and dusted. It is about to get real. I speak with the, both the skippers later in sport about exactly where they think the cup will be won or lost on the water. Thank you, Tom. With less than a day to go until they face Luna Rossa, Team New Zealand's confident they've developed their boat enough to defend the America's Cup. Fronting up ahead of tomorrow's opening race, Peter Burling emphasised how much Te Rehutai has changed since we last saw it in December, and the list of improvements is extensive. Tom McRae joins us from the team base, and Tom, the moment of truth is nearly here for Team New Zealand. Very, very nearly. I think I can speak for most people involved with the America's Cup and say that everyone is sick and tired of all the talk down at the media conference today. The teams and all the event staff just want the event to hurry up and start. Didi Hutai primed and preened to what Team New Zealand say is as close to perfection as they can get her. No, I don't have you know, any, I suppose, regrets in terms of the decisions we've made along the way. The main decision, the foils. Team New Zealand's are 30% smaller than Luna Rossa, making them faster but more unstable. It's a trade-off no one will know has paid off until racing finally gets underway. One thing, though, is guaranteed. Both teams will be ultra-aggressive. Now we will see a real ding-dong. They're confident, aren't they, throwing those boats around. But it was a subdued performance as Peter Burling and Luna Rossa boss Max Serena gave nothing away in the last press conference before racing starts tomorrow. There is a lot of pressure on top of both team and um, I think we got nothing to lose so we're going to give everything. 
and veteran of 13 America's Cups, PJ Montgomery, says that's what makes the Italian so dangerous. There is nothing in sport like the first leg of the first race of the America's Cup. There's no other sporting event that competes with it. He says all the speculation and talk about Team New Zealand hitting 60 knots in training and will simply be able to sail around Luna Rossa is just that, talk. I think it's wrong that, uh, to, to write them off. How sick of the talk are you? I'm pretty sick. This is the, really the, 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 the side which I don't really like of the America's Cup. And there is too much politics. But as both teams headed out to train one last time this afternoon, they know politics and talk now count for nothing. The winning or losing is how they'll be defined. All right, Tom, what should we be looking for when racing finally begins? Yeah, well, it's all about what happens in that start box. Look for both teams to be ultra-aggressive, and you know Jimmy Spittle is not going to hold anything back, especially if he thinks the Kiwis have a speed advantage. And within five minutes, by the time they get to that top mark for the very first time in, the, in that first race, we should have a pretty clear idea of exactly how the teams are matched up. We're looking forward to it, Tom. Thank you.